There are now more than 343 commercial flights a day leaving the Salt Lake International Airport. And last year, 24 million people came and went from Salt Lake City by air. Craig Worth takes us back before the days of air travel. We go back to when you came to Salt Lake City by train. It was when people often had hours to explore the city before catching the next train to where they were going from this, the crossroads of the West. Back then, the railroads promoted Salt Lake City day trips, as we see in tonight's Worth Watching. Here comes the Yellowstone Special. Oh, it was the 1950s, and trains were coming in here to the Union Pacific Station all day and night, and it was the same story down the street. Yes, the competing Denver and Rio Grande had welcomed trains at its station since 1910. It really is how most folks came to Salt Lake City. Indeed, we were a train hub and a destination. On to Salt Lake City, miracle metropolis that rose from dead desert sands. Rare Rio Grande film shows just how important Salt Lake City was to the train business. Salt Lake City, commercially and culturally the lodestone of the West a tribute to the foresight and wisdom of its founder, Brigham Young. The rail company wanted you to take a day here. Majestically situated on a rolling slope, Utah's magnificent granite capital is a fitting symbol of this great commonwealth. Beautiful gardens surround the temple, and most prominent is this cactus reproduction of a beehive. Oh, a train trip to Salt Lake City. It was a big deal, and the Rio Grande picked a prominent Utahn to advertise it all. Heber J. Grant, seventh president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I am delighted always to welcome visitors to Salt Lake City. The Lord's house has been built here. A desert has been redeemed. People of many nations have gathered here. I was born and raised in this valley and was a passenger on the first Rio Grande train into Salt Lake City more than half a century ago. The passing years have strengthened the thought I had then that these fertile valleys of the Rockies are a tribute to the industry, sacrifice, thrift, and courage of the pioneer men and women who founded this land of bountiful beauty. Well, it was the perfect time, and Utah was in the perfect place in the West for the glory days of trains. To fully appreciate Salt Lake City and understand its unique historical background requires far more time than the few brief hours we have enjoyed. Hours amongst people friendly and hospitable. But we face the inflexible reality of railroad schedules. And it's back on board. Utah is the Desert Empire. Craigworth, News for Utah. The Union Pacific Depot is now a grand entrance to the Gateway Mall and a music venue. The Rio Grande Station houses the State Department of History and the State Department of Heritage and Arts, as well as a restaurant. The California Zephyr is the only train still serving Salt Lake City today. That eastbound Amtrak leaves the intermodal hub at 3.30 a.m. and the westbound arrives at 11.05 p.m.